Hello boys, my name is Kuliyoshi. Welcome back to my blind playthrough of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, the Switch with the Japanese voices enabled. In the last video we left off mostly in Kadentia, but also in some uh, uh in Origin a bit, killing some more monsters and getting some more effect setups. Anyway, we're gonna get Warning Tree as a landmark and then um, this video might actually not be a direct gem grind or whatever, I don't know. Because, uh, the enemies we ain't to farm are here, yes. But, in order to find them, we actually have to go into a hidden cave we haven't explored yet. See this random dark spot in the middle of nowhere? Well, that's exactly where we're going to go now. I think I mentioned I was going to ignore it at first, and... Well, now's the time to really go exploring more than anything. I will admit, exploring through Lower Mactel Wildwood is quite tedious, considering Leon, you have to do the exploration, most of us, without even a second landmark. Oh, so that is a trap. I don't know why I went there. I'm gonna need to check this a bit more deeper. Yeah, I think the spot we actually want to go is either to the right here, which seems to be a dead end, so I assume the cave is gonna be down the right, so... We're going over there. We did go here at one point to farm the Dragoos, and I believe upon going here, we'll eventually probably see the second super boss. Of course, we're not going to be fighting him just yet, but we are going to need to explore the area for the purposes of exploring it. So I figure, hey, I say it all, I'm going to explore this whole area now. Before I forget. So we're gonna go over here, make sure make sure that shadow is gone. And head into this area, which is directly behind the area we came here before. And you'll see this actually isn't much of a cave, this is actually more of a metrical sign more than anything. But anyway, somewhere here in Low Mata Wildwood, Lower Mata Wildwood, whatever, I don't know why it called it Low Mata Wildwood, but then on the map it's called Lower Mata Wildwood. Game just can't decide what to call it for some reason. There's some higher level goggles here, so make note of that if you want to farm goggles materials. The other spot I used is. And Ivan is pretty good. Oh, okay, alright. We didn't find an initial setup yet, but we did find an elevator which reads into an unknown area, so of course we're going to use this elevator. Which is actually gonna, for some reason, now just take us higher up. Uh, I don't know if I wanna use this or not. Whatever, I have to keep going. I have to keep going. I need to see where this actually leads. Nothing. I believe the elevator would have been locked from the inside too, so I guess now this just acts as a separate shortcut. So if you activate this, you'll just go straight down to the Lord Magda Wildred, skipping the other stuff. So perhaps this was supposed to be an OG entrance or something? I don't know, though, because I, um, entered this from a different hide and not a lot happened before. Okay, well, that elevator did nothing to help us out. Let's go over here and see if it's over here. I need to explore this area at some point, so I figured why not get it out of the way early. Remember, no landmarks, so we have to walk most. Hocked mostly to find all the stuff we need. At least until we get uh, any extra landmarks. I'm gonna gratefully pull up the map again. Alright, that dark sound of the right is gonna be where we head next. Maybe that's where our cave is. Keep in mind, this is still technically a blind playthrough in that I have no idea where I'm going way, so I still very much are clueless for the best 
cuts are, or whether or not there's extra landmarks in here, so we're kind of just going around and hoping for the best. Now, figures dead end again. We'll get a better view if we go over here. Martin Pharonic is closest to the next uh, shot, so we'll go to his graveyard so we can uh, go all the way up this tree and see where to go next. I think I need to actually go up very close to this point anyway. Sorry, a little bit of a moment. At first glance, it looks like we're jumping in a water to our deaths, but then you remember that we picked up Sea Girl's talent, so we do not get damaged by poison. Ooh, this might be where. Uh, this is probably the correct way to go. This is another spot where you can get some Brogs defeated if you're not interested in taking out that one that has the good Grog oil. There's also some very, very high level Rakdos. The main thing we're looking for is the Grebbles. <laughs> And here we go! See, figures, we need to discover the cave first. Cavern of Oblivion. This is going to be the first cave that we are going to look through for a while. This has very high level 93 monsters up to level 99. This is going to be where we spend most of our time on the next grind since uh, we need Grebbles. Now, one problem you'll see already why we missed a lot. Um, these enemies, uh, well, have quite a few things. One, they are evasive as freaking craziness, apparently. Every single attack they use causes them to then miss a lot of stuff, and just, it gets really annoying. That's annoying. So yeah, they actually have... So yeah, these enemies actually have evasion arts, which means if unless we uh, get the topple right away, we'll regularly miss our topples and evasion arts. Once they are toppled, though, just like they are in the base aim, you can no longer miss arts. And they can no longer form arts on their own. So ideally, we just get that on them as soon as possible. But anyway... This is going to be more of a OG cave exploration, which we haven't done since the base game. We're going around exploring the cave, getting this exploration done, but also clearing out the other stuff. So really, this is actually a mixed video, because this is exploring an area that we haven't explored yet, but also gem grinding at the same time. I am going to show both options here, though, as alternatives. This video might be longer because of it, but honestly, we need to make sure you guys know where to find the Grebbles. Thankfully though, there's plenty of them here already. And they're pretty high level for what they are, so we can just leave ourselves at 99 and still get a pretty long fight for the most part. It's also really good for CP since they're very, very high level, so Noah will be regularly getting like probably 200 or so CP from the monsters. Without chain attack. With a chain attack, you'd probably be getting even more. I think they slightly give more than the monsters from Never Cave. Though there are more of the turret enemies you take out versus the other enemies. The reason why I went there, because like, they're right, very much close to max level levels. Just 96s and 97 elites. Okay, yeah, that was about 111 CP. So yeah, pretty fair amount. 
get a narrow chest. Even more ultra pure gemstones and more money. Soul points aren't really as required though anymore. Seems like you get more than enough. And there's also a unique blunt enemy. I don't believe that's part of the regular chain vein. I do want to do that more of the killing it, so um, I'm thinking of maybe switching the dazes over to launches just briefly, or briefly um, replacing one setup with a launch and then having someone on a uh, I'm on with a uh, smash so that we can uh, very quickly get stuff done. Of course, we're getting this out of the way first so we can very quickly um, get other stuff done. Since these aren't part of our regular enemies, we uh, do other stuff. Hopefully this will just finish off in those um, spears altogether. Because we have so many up there by uh, we could probably just get a bunch of okay well we didn't need that apparently they just quickly died after that yeah this is a lot of spears that was enough for pretty much one full loop of... That was, on its own, powerful enough to give us multiple power-ups. Dang, that was crazy. Alright, well, it looks like we found our previous landmark set up. But yeah, there are three gambles near to start. That's the ones we're going to be killing mostly. Those award a good amount of experience points. But the main thing we found is this unique monster that we are definitely going to kill. To ensure that we can pull it into a good spot, however, we are going to first get a weaker bot on the right side area. But we may as well scrub out and just kill all the plants in this area. We might need plant materials later, honestly, so we're gonna keep this later. So if you were to farm plant materials, this is probably the best place to go. Given it has a really high level unique monster, but we're gonna take this out the fast way. If we need to get on with the video, if you ask me. We wanna get this as a chat point for later. So we're going to of course be doing this the old fashioned sort of speed way. For those of you who don't know the fastest way to beat the eight monsters in this game. Doesn't involve topple locking them or doing like other weird combos like you do in Zelda 2. It's basically just spamming chain attacks because chain attacks in this game are really buffed and just have a very heavy multiplier for all of their damage. So you basically just want to spam them non-stop. Best way to do it is to delay the attack animation until the topple appears. That way, when you go in and use a chain, you uh, all of your attacks do more damage. For some reason, if you topple during this, it does not um, boost your attack power, but um, if you have already toppled them and then go in, all of our attacks will be basically boosted. Now, we don't have launch, of course, so we can't uh, do the launch strat we do the maximum damage, but we'll still do the strat that we usually do on these. Which is, uh, use DPS followed by healer, followed by a tank. We'll force one of our DPS characters to come back. Then, we're going to use them again. The new spawn drift was very low percent. So I would say maybe we could have done a DPS art as well. By the way, for some reason knockback doesn't trigger, even though it's a chain attack. This feels kind of weird. 
two. That would just complete our setup, and this might not be enough, annoyingly enough. Oh yeah, we get 5% right here, but we might not have enough. Tell you what, I'm just gonna do this anyway. Probably don't need to, but I think I don't really have much of a choice here. Thankfully, we'll get at least one character revived anyway, so hopefully we get another tank, maybe? Or something else? Actually, one healer is probably better anyway, so thank you. No upper cover dash. Now we're gonna start boosting up Lance's percent. Your uh, multi blast instead gives us a lot of percent. Of TP. This will not be 100%, unfortunately. Or 200%. But it'll at least be Bravo, which is not terrible, thanks and Surge. Gives us two characters back. Now we can get random characters, Alver. We did keep Miyavi, though, for that reason, so even if. So here is we can still finish the chain, but thankfully we got what we want back. And now we can do the option order to do a CLS. We'll um, use this art just to complete the percent a bit quicker, even though we probably could have gone for the Bravo instead. I think we would have gotten it anyway. We will get 200% art completion, so hopefully the standing art will do at least some damage. I did not know which one to get around, so I decided to just do that. Anyway, we'll put down Power Circle. I'll have you summon elemental for no real laser whatsoever. I don't know if those give you like full on buffs like they did back in uh, Xenoblade 1, but I could be wrong. I think we want to keep Topple for this move because I think Daze doesn't have as bad of a multiplier. We could try it just to see, but Launch has the highest possible damage multiplier if we want to do damage with it early on. But at some point you also want to smash, because like the smash does a lot of damage. Yeah, that still works. So yeah, a nice extended battle once again. Pretty soon we're probably going to check it out of our enemy when they do. Since we are going for a kill percent, we are gonna quickly uh, switch us into Oracle's form here. Switch over to Noah's form, which is the strongest. Gosh darn it. Part of the problem is, um, ooh, you know what? This works better. That did a decent amount of damage. 
The one with VR boss in particular, if you can get good combos, but if you didn't get that time to do a lot of damage, we're gonna delay a bit on purpose. Ah, we didn't get the date somehow. Now we're going to interrupt it. I want to see if this does any fire damage, but it might not. What it does allow us to do is basically do almost any attack. So we'll do that. We'll probably burst at the end of this if we kill, just to make sure that we get materials. I'm gonna use... Alright, so, to be a bit smarter this time, I'm gonna actually use Tina first, and she is the weaker of the two characters, be it TP-wise. Just to make sure that we get our, our completed. Oh, now this is a much, much higher art. We're gonna pick Lance on purpose, because Uni might go over 100% if we don't do that. we we'll use Giant Swing once again. Yeah, with 10% arts, uh, 10 points, that would have definitely gone over, so we made a good choice there. Now we'll immediately use Geo, which we can just do right away to give Uni back a second time. Okay, well, we didn't get our healer character, but we could at least get pick me on purpose to get the best orbals for him off, which will at least do some damage. We use this for the first blood multiplier, since this is also going to be our last team part. We're going to go ahead and exhaust our other characters real quick. Ooh, this might give us a uh, two out of percent. Okay, yeah, we did get it. Cool, we got amazing. That'll that'll heavily uh, make up for the one less art cooldown thing. Like I said, there's a lot of RG to getting the healers or when you want them. Since we're trying to kill the enemy, why don't we just start with the uh, Lance right off the bat. Get our big percentage out of the way. We didn't kill this guy yet, so we'll have to keep the days on for now. We've gotten a couple of days in burst goggles even through just doing this strat. Part of the problem though, without lunch or any debuffs, it doesn't do nearly as much damage as you think it should. That was even less than damage than before, so maybe the temple is the way to go. By the way, we probably would have actually killed it guaranteed if Noah wasn't lower. Maybe that's not actually the choice I should have done. I don't know. Anyway, I got lied. I only literally went in there for the Grebbles. So basically from here, you basically just want to kill the Grebbles, then target one enemy and retreat. But I mentioned I would show the other spot as well. This is what I'm actually going to farm. Which is G Jiki and Upper Ada. This one is really interesting. 
as it's right in the same spot where you first met Sea Girl for the very first time. Well, her friends, that is. He actually took this monster out more recently, too. It was one of our last unique monsters we killed in the friend. Anyways, now we know where to farm the best plant materials. Not like that matters. I don't know if they're even right rank 10 or not. Alright. Here's the unique we want to face for our materials. We did get a few materials from the IU Force, but I don't think there was enough to where it's uh, doing that regularly. Anyways, it's big thing that's really annoying which you saw it just used there, which is currently rocket. If it successfully uses that art, it um, basically evades all the attacks. It's basically it's evasion art. And then it also just gets really annoying because it breaks us right back. Obviously with so high of a level that it's not gonna cause us to die, but it's annoying enough that it's gonna get in our way. There's also some weaker Drebbles around that we can kill as well. You might want to kill them before gaining the boss, but... Typically... Yeah... And yes, I'm not, I did, decided not to explore the rest of the area because I wanted to kill that unique point first. I will admit that was actually unlucky. I was actually trying for a different form. I really did not want to get to a or a ghost form, but I didn't really get much of a choice there because the game just said no. It's kind of frustrating. Remember, Go is lower level, so he does significantly less damage from the normal storm now than he did before. There's the evasion arc. I'm gonna wait for it to end. Yeah, Burling Vaka is the one to watch out for. It basically evades all the other arts. Missed uh, of course. Oh my gosh, I missed twice. And now I'd use the early rock because we can't do anything. I to say, yeah, we're definitely not gonna get the days off now. Yeah, we're close enough that I uh, can probably just do it one more time to finish it off. Honestly, this is probably the faster way to get the gravel materials. But I did want to show you that there is an alternative. Because that area has 94 enemies, then it has a very, very high chance of dropping the materials. But it's a bit more increased if you also take out enemies. So I think overall this kind of bounces out. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna do one more burst for extra effort. Then we're gonna give up. Remember, you can do this at any time if you want to speed up this grind once you see that you've collected the materials. Especially if you only need one, you could just do that and install the other battle. And then from here, there are quite a few stuff to do with the meals, which are floating jellyfish. So, I think to make this a bit easier, I think I'm just gonna straight up kill both of the monsters in both areas.
so first one is up here on the right side area and is known as Phantasmical Rick. And then there's another one uh, next area. There's also one of the spots is really good to kill whips as well. So you remember that spot because we might be coming back here again. Anyway. This is another one of those quick monster battles where it's probably not going to last a lot of time, but uh, we'll still be able to get at least some views and materials for that. Annoyingly enough, we need the meals, balls, seeds, or cobbles. But we do need the tentacles as well for a steady striker, so we might stay here for a bit longer yet. I was close. Somebody already am with that. We're gonna quick chain here just to uh, get a first off. Thankfully, since we have that done, it'll actually not take that long at all. We'll just use our days and first couple. Finish him off and burst him at the same time. But we'll get our materials and then we can quickly end it to finish it off. So this is the first common you can find. The other one is probably actually what we're going to be farming for the last of it. Is um Kadenchia, but we have to go back to the very start of the name area where we first met in here. We'll just go to this spot since we can just teleport back here after we're done. And then we find a monster called Spectral Remy. This is our one we took out pretty early on. This is a very good place to farm whips. I think I mentioned this when I first got here that there are plenty of wisps around. So heh, let's kill some of them now. Like we're close to the weekly monsters, our main goal is to just try and uh, get a chain off, though it can be quite tricky. These Psych are kind of monsters are one reason why I initially started removing all of my attacking gear, but also getting rid of my attackers altogether. Let's uh, take out these Aramids first. Uh, those were, that was just getting them out of the way so they wouldn't bother us later. Here we go. That wasn't even a resist. My first attack straight up missed there that time. Unlucky. Unlucky. That's all I can say of that. We might actually just get out the materials we need just from this part, at least in terms of the common materials. Not so sure about the purples. Remember, purples are much harder to get than regular materials on the sky. Since we might die, we're gonna fix the chain early. Since we're. What am I talking about? <laughs> we're gonna die, I meant. He's probably going to 
uh, die before we get another burst off, we'll do the burst strat again. Probably don't need to use Tyron's burst, but we're gonna do it anyway. Just so we don't go over another tactician points, which us nearly had the chain without seeing an art. Okay, and so we collected that item. The real question is, did we get the purple stuff? Now, we did have been farming the oats in other places, so we might already have a lot of them. We never really took a look at it, though. Okay, um, there's a little bit more left for Steady Striker, so one more kill should hopefully do it. I was about to say, yeah, we better hit that t this time. What the heck was that before? Honestly, if you're annoyed with all the hit stuff, one other thing I forgot to mention, you can just replace some of your attacking items with things that are accuracy, hence why I have dexterity on a couple of characters. And mainly, there's one that increases your accuracy during either the night or the day, or in certain areas. Having those will heavily improve your odds of hitting the enemy to ensure that your reactions are actually hit to you. It might actually be a, not a bad idea to have that on a low dexterity blade, which means slightly lower accuracy blade. Like an ogre, just to ensure that it hits more frequently. Yeah, three is them in place again. I like this quick change strat. It can work pretty well if you uh, first bright mist. That's gonna throw everything off. Now we have to use Yumi. We might go over the percent now because of that. So yeah, to use extra stuff. We'll just use. Yeah. yeah. There's no way to avoid it now. So we want to use our Daisy first with our other character. So our take an extra art. We'll just dash the art. Doesn't really matter who we get. Oh wow, we got. The Yavi, which is the one I would have picked anyway, anyway. That needs to be in the first spot, just so you know. The left of a spot or for that dark, so yeah, that was pretty lucky. Oh, <laughs> you get better, so we just get end the chain anyway. We got some purple tentacles, but we seem to be getting more balls than tentacles. Yeah, I don't think I even got much of that. That was a terrible luck. Well, we're gonna waste some more time, I guess, and kill monster once more. Cool, this is purple. We normally actually reset this since this would remove the common material drops and we know uh, they would not be able to get it, but we do need the purple material for a different drop, so it'd be nice not having notes getting away. You know, if we didn't get unlucky with that first setup, I'm gonna start farming right away. Which, every time a purple drop appears, we're gonna count what we actually get. We need still three more Meod's tentacles that are legendary rank or purple. Got one. Only one so far. This guy is letting us know that we can't just get his tentacles easily. Every time we're getting the tentacles, they're always yellow for some reason. Yeah, that's just taking a long time to get off that table. 
gonna use a crumble thing. Interesting, it didn't kill him quite. We're still gonna end the chain anyway. Well, now we have to hope oh, that he's got a Euro drop. I don't get what's happening, by the way. I did count the set. Oh, wait a minute. We must have gotten two Beyond's tentacles from that, or... Yeah, okay, one of those was a Beyond's tentacle, and I must have missed the last one. I'm so focused on other items that I didn't catch the second Beyond's tentacle dropping, but, uh, that works. If you're wondering why I delayed so much, you'll know why in a minute, but, um... Sad to say, I feel like we've been going at this video for a bit too long. Sorry guys, but we're gonna be ending this episode right here. We've also crossed the 100-hour mark. Oh boy, that's a lot of time in one game, but uh, this is a long game. What can I say? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Cut, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.